Hello everyone and welcome to part 3 of uh, building this model of Passchendaele. Um, in the first video what we concentrated on was um, building the board itself and the terrain, plastering over the initial part at the front um, and then adding on the duct boards, uh, creating the shell holes and just the initial phase. Uh, video number 2, part 2, um, I built further along here, made the, um, the dugouts uh, taken from images of, from the war and also the triage post, flooded triage post so a lot of that has been completed now, um, still a little bit to do and, and towards the end of uh, video 2 I also started adding some of the trees um, so this part 3 in video what I'm going to concentrate on now is this top right hand corner up here um, I'm going to fill these holes, plaster all this over um, finish off the duck boards, um, the little root of the duck boards and then in this larger area here will be some water uh, maybe cut this down to the water level and then I'll build a little bridge here, a little broken footbridge coming out from the, into, the, into the water there um, and that will be, uh, be video number three so since the last video what I've done, I've done a few things I firstly covered the whole of this area that I've initially plastered with, with plaster and paint and sand and bits and pieces which I wasn't too too happy with really with the effect so what I've done is I've bought some uh, Vallejo thick mud um, acrylic so Vallejo is thick mud um, this comes in a 200 milliliter tub and I know they do in a smaller 40 milliliter uh, container as well and they do do different colors there's five or six maybe different types uh, depending on what terrain you're working on um, it basically looks like that, it just looks like thick mud um, but contains like little bits of grit and sand um, and little bits and pieces in there to, to replicate the real stuff which it really does um, once it's dried it goes straight onto there um, once it's dried it dries pretty much the same colour as what's in the jar it doesn't lighten or anything um, you can apply it to vehicles um, and all sorts of bits and pieces um, and it can also be thinned down according to the instructions on the side you thin it down with a little bit of thinners and then it can be it can be painted on, um, or also um, used one of these as well to to, to add it to the terrain. Um, it's made a massive difference to uh, to this, so it's it's really recommended. Um, it's good stuff. The second thing I've what I've done is I've as you can probably see is I've put some water effects into the shell holes um, and created a few little tiny smaller puddles. And for that, what I've done is I've used this stuff, Envirotex Light. It's a pour on high gloss finish, uh, it's a resin, two part resin and for the price and value for money it's really good basically it's, it's um, the idea is it's bought to cover the tops of tabletops give them like a, a hardened clear finish you can use it on all sorts of things, there's loads of videos on, on YouTube for example showing you how to use this stuff and I will use it um, in this video to, uh, to fill a few more holes, some of these have got to be uh, filled a little bit more, this is just the initial um, initial coating of the water like you can see comes in two parts equal parts mixed together a little bit of paint added and then just poured in it's uh, a little bit of a process to put it together but it's really effective it's really nice finish so I'm happy with the, how that turned out and finally the third thing I've done is I finished the figures down here are the the five British soldiers that will be uh, on the board so the two figure sets I've used both from Masterbox um, the first one, 35146 and 35158. Both of them are from the, admittedly from the Somme battle period, um, but I'm happy to use them since they're, they're quite nice um, poses and, and suitable for this, for this model. Um, really nice to put together, to paint up. Admittedly, they're probably the, the longest time I've taken to, to actually paint any figures, but I'm really pleased with how they've come out. Using images from the from the war, from taken from the internet, color photos, which is useful um, to get the try and get the colors right, and also looking at other people's models who have done some similar kind of thing with these figures um, to get again color color references. Um, this last guy on the end, I decided when I was painting his bag to give, make him a medic. Um, just to give him a, a, something a little bit different from the others. Um, so two of them will be walking down the duck boards with the German prisoners, this one and this one. Um, a couple of them will be in the, f in the forward post and this guy will just be stepping aside off the duck boards waiting for the Germans to go through. Um, I'll be adding him onto the board pretty soon. The Germans themselves, all they've done at the moment, they've just been primed in grey paint, spray paint, um, and then I'll start working on them soon. But like I say, the, the British guys, really happy with the way they've turned out and um, they should look nice once they're added.
now that the bridge is finished, um, I'm ready to apply the first layer of the resin for the water. Um, this is how the diode's looking in the coffee table uh, where it'll eventually uh, end up. Um, as you can see in one of the corners, top right hand corner by the bridge, I've added some more uh, vegetation, some roots, some grass because I wanted to make that part in that corner a little bit more of a grassy area as opposed to the rest of the battlefield. Um, I've added a few more trees, the duckboards still need to be weathered on the, uh, on the new part um, with some oil paints and some uh, mud effects, things like that. Um, as you can see there on the left hand side, I still need to add some of Vallejo's mud to the, uh, to the plastered area, add a few more roots and some, uh, some more bits and pieces and then add to, to, uh, add to the water effects as well. But that's how it's all looking right now. Um, so the next job now, as I mentioned, is to add the, uh, the first layer of resin, firstly primarily to, the, uh, to where the bridge is, but also to a few more other areas that just need a top up um, and another thin layer. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I do the water effects for the shell holes and the puddles, etc. on the diode. And for that, as I mentioned a little earlier in this video part, I'll be using this stuff, Envirotex Lite. It's a pour on two part resin. Um, and then as usual, it comes in um, the hardener and then the softener mixed in equal quantities. Um, this box is 236 milliliter, which is enough to cover two square foot of area, which should be plenty to, um, to cover the, the area that I'll be using, all the shell holes, etc. Um, give them a few uh, thin layers at a time. Um, and for that purpose as well, you're mixing um, in the, the two cups. I've decided since it's 236 milliliter, I can use this in over six sessions using four milliliters at a time, 40 milliliters at a time. Um, with the paints um, and I've also kept a note of how much uh, drops of each paint to use so after each session um, the water colours um, in, the, in the mud is, uh, is the same each time. Okay so now in the little pot I have 20 millilitres of the resin and 20 millilitres of the hardener and the instructions recommend that you know that you mix it for a good uh, good two minutes so I've got a stopwatch here on the phone so we'll start mixing This is the third session of 40 milliliters, if that makes sense. So I've still got another, just under, just short of 120 mils left, which is a, which is half of the bottles, which looks about right. So I've still got plenty to fill in the rest of the the holes and the shell holes for the dio. So that is now pretty much ready to add to the board. Okay, so the area I'm primarily going to use um, to fill now is where the new bridge is going to be, or is rather. Um, and that's going to probably take two or three layers of resin at, at, uh, at any one time. Um, so I'm going to do this area first and then work on this area which has only got one layer so far. It finds its level really nicely this stuff. Um, doesn't shrink once it's dry anything like that. So the resin's been down now for about 10 minutes. As you can see, there's still quite a few air bubbles uh, on the surface, coming to the surface, especially in the left corner there. Um, and I'll sh but I'll show you in a moment how we can get rid of those. There's a couple of ways. Uh, that 40 milliliter tub um, was plenty enough to, to fill this first crater for the bridge. And then a smaller shell hole here had a very thin layer um, just to finish off the pot. 
Um, but all in all, looking at the diorama, um, that's now half half the two bottles. So that's given me 120 milliliters of resin has covered that area so far. And I've still got to do those two now on the right, small one in the middle there. And then where the tank's going to go, uh, we'll take a bit more resin, but I don't know until the tank's down to, uh, to see what that's going to look like. So that, uh, that box of Environment, Envirotex Lite cost me 12 pounds. So it's about two pounds uh, for 40 milliliters, which isn't too, too bad compared to some other products. Um, so I'll give that another maybe five, 10 minutes and then I can show you how I go about um, trying to get rid of some of those air bubbles. A couple of ways of doing it. Firstly, uh, is with just a simple drinking straw. And to blow down onto the surface, um, we'll eventually get rid of the bubbles. Um, doesn't take too long at all, so we'll just give that a try. Because the surface is obviously still wet, it's been down for about 20 minutes now, it moves around very easily still, but it does pop the air bubbles, um, breathing, uh, yeah, breathing onto them, blowing onto them. Um, so that works really well. The second effect, which is, which is just as good as using the, the blowtorch, um, just a normal barbecue lighter. Um, again, just moving around lightly and quickly over the surface will get rid of the, the bubbles out of there. I'll just quick demonstration, just really light passing and you can see them actually popping as you go over. Um, one thing I've learned quickly, like there, is not to hang around in one place too long for more than a second or so because although perhaps that's what you're looking for on a battlefield of this, this uh, nature, uh, the grass and the roots that you've carefully placed into the mud will start to singe and perhaps even burn, um, which does give you quite a nice little effect that you might not have been looking for. But in the end of the day, both, uh, both ways work equally well. And, uh, and it gives you a nice smooth finish. I'm coming towards the end of this uh, section of videos, uh, part three of four. I just thought I'd show you what come down quite recently. Uh, it's the Mark IV uh, battle tank, which will go in the top left-hand corner of the battlefield and finish off the diorama, which will be in uh, part four of the series. Um, initially, I wanted this one from uh, Tamaya, uh, which is their male version, um, but unfortunately, getting hold of, the, hold of it through certain websites, they're all out of stock. Um, so I had to look towards this one, which is Tatcoms. Um, they do their own, um, a few variants themselves. They do this one, which is their own Mark IV, with the uh, two six-pounder guns and the three Vickers machine guns. And then also this one, which is the female version, which doesn't have the six-pound guns, but has five Vickers machine guns. Um, but this one was I got for a very good price, just over £30, um, which I was really pleased with. Um, it's their Hermophrodite, and basically what it is, it's, it's a mixture of the two. It's the, the male on the one side, on the left-hand side, and the female version on the right-hand side. Um, I think they perhaps did make some or have some in production, but what I've read is not many, if any, went actually into, uh, onto the battlefields themselves. So now just to show you what is inside the box, um, there are a few really good reviews on YouTube which you could explain about it much more in much more detail than what I possibly could. Uh, but I'll just show you for now what's, what's inside here uh, pretty briefly. Uh, first obviously you get the uh, instruction book. It also comes, which is apparently a bit of a godsend, uh, their workable tracks which by all accounts is a lot lot easier. Uh, they just clip together, uh, simply uh, clip them together um, as opposed to some of the other TACCOM um, models which is, takes a lot, lot longer to put the tracks together and a lot more fiddly. So that's, uh, that's one good thing about this kit. 
Um, 100, 101,000 road wheels apparently to put together, which is quite tedious. Then the bottom right hand corner are the Vickers machine guns uh, that come with this kit. Um, the only problem, one problem with this kit, although the box will tell you otherwise, um, it only comes with one barrel. So if you wanted to make the male version, you would have to buy a second barrel from a third party. Um, or maybe make your own. Um, if you wanted to make the v female version of this model, it's got all the five machine guns required, but this one only has one uh, one cannon and you need two. So uh, that's one slight downside to it. Um, the box will tell you it's got two, but there is only one in, in, the, in the box. Uh, there's also no transfers in this box. There's no decals or anything like that, um, which is uh, probably quite unusual as well for, for, for kits of this type. But again, just all the just all the usual sprues to put this uh, to put this uh, tank together, um, and then also finally the actual shell, the hull of the tank itself. And the idea of that will be that it'll probably go in something something like that sort of a position in this corner in the predetermined hole, um, using a couple of images from the internet, uh, something similar to this to make it look like it's been knocked out. Um, play around with the tracks, perhaps. Um, and anyway, that's that's where that's going to sit, um, and it should finish off the model quite nicely. So part three pretty much finished um, and how things have moved on. I've completed and incorporated the small footbridge in this area here. I've uh, finished off the path of dot boards um, in the top corner and given those a weathered effect. Um, I've finished off the, the wooded area in the top right hand corner, added some more trees, some grass, twigs, um, some roots from the, from the trees to give it a wooded, uh, more like a woodland effect um, in comparison to the front part which is more just muddy, muddy terrain. Um, I filled in more and topped up some more of the shell holes with some more resin um, and then also incorporated four more of the figures, the two walking down the duckboards um, at the front there and the two in the forward post. And so on to the final part of this series of videos um, which I'll be starting soon. Um, part four will be covering uh, the build, painting and inclusion of Tatcom's Mark IV female tank. Um, incredibly perhaps in 14 years of modelling this will only be my sixth tank build. Um, seem to deviate more towards terrain buildings and figures. Um, I've built some AFVs and some trucks, jeeps in the past, but uh, this is actually only my sixth tank, so that should be interesting. Um, I'll be painting and adding the trio of German prisoners um, coming down the duck boards, um, and that'll be finish off the two figure sets from Master Box I've got on this dio. Um, in the top right hand corner, I'll be creating um, the roads using plaster, some dirt, and mud. And once the tank's built, um, it will determine exactly where that will go. Um, ditched onto the side of the road, um, a little something like this um, will look quite smart. Um, I've purchased from, uh, from Verlinden's um, skeletal figures, two German soldiers. I'll be using the bottom one, um, and which is there. And that will be incorporated into the plaster on the road. Um, again, just to add a little bit more detail um, and interest to the, to the, to the scene. Um, and then finally, along here I'll be building a, a small uh, stone wall separating um, the raised road to the uh, meadow on the left. Um, I did originally build, start building a little grass bank to see what that would look like, but I thought the, the stone wall would add even more interest and detail. Um, obviously, uh, be broken up a little bit due to the shelling. But that will be running along pretty much along here. Um, and I'm also going to build a signpost, um, which will put some geographical um, interest into exactly where this, this, this uh, area would have been situated. Um, so that's all to come. Um, so thanks very much for watching. Um, any comments um, and likes, much appreciated as always. And I'll see you in part four.